We're continuing to monitor the situation there and the public protests that we've seen uh, in many countries throughout the region because the unrest is pushing up the cost to ensure sovereign debt in the Middle East. Credit default swaps on Bahrain jumped for a fourth day to the highest level since July of 2009. In Egypt, swaps uh, rose to their highest level in more than a week. Our next guest says all this instability, if you're an investor, could actually lead to opportunity. You just have to know where to find it. Hans Humes is the president of Greylock Capital Management, top emerging market hedge fund, and according to the data we keep here at Bloomberg, one of the best. So thank you very much, Hans, for coming in today. Um, and when we talk about the Middle East, we should say you have 400 million under management, about 21% of that allocated to the Middle East. So you've got exposure here. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the Middle East has been one of our biggest focuses since um, December 09. Uh, we've spent more and more time investigating the opportunities there. Uh, and we certainly think, despite, to some extent, because of the unrest, there are opportunities that are arising. So where are you finding opportunities? In Bahrain, in Egypt, or are you staying away? Um, fair question. I, I think that there's obviously a split between the commodity exporters and then the countries where there's sort of a surplus of labor. Okay. labor. Um, the places that we're focusing, for example, uh, uh, we have some investments in Abu Dhabi, uh, in Dubai, um, in Oman, MBPS is, uh, is prevent, uh, presents a very good uh, investment opportunity. I think we can see about a 15% return on the, the debt there compared to um, a 6.5% yield on the uh, 2020s in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, the instability is certainly a cause for concern. Um, you may see an exodus of the large investors from the Middle East. Um, there's a different investor pool for uh, people in the UAE. There's a lot more local money. Places like Egypt, you've, you really have the large investors, um, international investors who've allocated money there. If they start to exit, it's going to put pressure on the whole region. We'll see that as an, a buying opportunity for some of the plays that we see more in the UAE and less so much in, in, in uh, Egypt and, and Bahrain. And most of the opportunity you find not in equities, in fixed income opportunities. Well, I think there are going to be opportunities in equities too. Um, I suppose that we might come into an Egypt if we see a capitulation trade when it, when the tap on the shoulder goes to the you know the big mutual fund manager or the you know the, whoever's trading on the desk and there's a wholesale liquidation of portfolios and we start to see equity you, type you expect returns. that when the market reopens on Sunday I, I don't know. I certainly think that what's happening in Egypt is not a long-term solution. I think over the next six months, you, you're going to see continued volatility. Um, mm -hmm. There's no question that the protests in the street, while they're um, on the surface, it, it appears to be about democracy. There's also an issue of uh, inflation um, in soft commodity prices, rise obviously in food prices, and I think the people are agitating because there's under, you know structural under, underemployment there, and uh, the military proclamation that they're going to oversee a transition to democracy, um, we'll see. When a military steps in, very often they don't mm -hmm. leave power. So where, if you're reallocating, where are you putting your money to work if, if you're reducing exposure to the Mideast? Um, we're not reducing exposure to the Mideast, we're reallocating. Um, okay. But I think if you look across emerging markets in general, I'm, I was noticing before what you had uh, about emerging markets, there are pressure, the pressures coming from people exiting. Mm -hmm. But I would say that um, you can look at places like Venezuela, uh, Argentina, okay. on the hard commodity and soft commodity side. Thank you very much.